Hello and welcome to this video on free variables in types and typing contexts in the Hindley-Milner type system. So previously we looked at the lambda calculus, we looked at expressions there where we've got variables, function application, function abstraction and let expressions. We also looked at free variables and expressions um, where we could say well for each of these production rules we can also apply a function on top of them to find the free variables in that expression. Um, we then looked at Hindley-Milner types, uh, so we've got monotypes represented by a tau and polytypes represented by a sigma here. If you don't remember any of these things, have a look at the previous videos, hopefully you can get up to speed. So you might think, if we can define what a free variable is in a lambda expression, can we do that for a Hindley-Milner type? And we can. Um, we'll see why it's useful later, but for now we're just going to learn how we determine what is a free variable. It's very very similar, the rules look something like this. So again, for our three different production rules, for our variables, type function applications, and for our quantifiers, we've got a free variable rule. So for the first one, if we've just got a type variable, the free variables are just that type variable. Um, if we've got a type function application, that's a second line, well, it's just the union of all the different free variables in those type arguments. Um, and actually the only time we remove free variables is where we have the quantifier, where we've got um, a for all quantifier, we remove that quantified variable. In a way, these rules are very, very similar to what the rules are for lambda expressions. You can think of variables and applications as the same, and the quantifier is very similar to function abstraction. We can also extend this to contexts. So we also looked at Hindley-Milner contexts in a previous video. And what we've got to remember are contexts are lists of assignments, where an assignment basically associates a type with a, an expression. So you can see here, our capital gamma is our context. It's either an empty list or it's some other context with an extra assignment. So effectively we're building up a list of these assignments. That assignment being an expression E has type sigma. So what are the rules here? Well, here we're saying an empty context just has no free variables. That kind of makes sense intuitively when something's empty, well, there's nothing in it. Um, otherwise, it's the free variables in the rest of the list. You can kind of think of it as, and then we take the type in the expression and we take the free variables of that. So what this effectively means is that the free variables in a context is the union of all the free variables in the types of the assignments. That's a lot of notation, that's a lot to remember, so let's go through some examples. What are the free variables in this type? So we have a type here where we're saying for all beta, we have a list of functions which take a beta and then return a function gamma to beta. You might be able to do this by inspection, we're going to do it with the formal rules, um, Feel free to pause and try this for yourself. Um, feel free to just watch it through if you're still a bit confused. Again, this is going to be very similar to how we did it for lambda expressions, where we can kind of look at it, uh, see what is bound by our for all quantifiers, see what isn't, and then uh, that will help us find out what our free variables are. So um, remember, these are our rules for Hindley Milner types, for free variables and Hindley Milner types. Uh, this is what we're trying to figure out the free variables in this type. So let's have a look. Well, the first rule, we've got this quantifier at the top. Um, so we're going to break that out um, where we've got this beta um, and we're going to take the free variables of the rest of the stuff minus beta. Um, so the free variables in the rest of the stuff, we've got a list, which is a type function application. So we apply that rule where we union all the things. We've only actually got one thing. Uh, so effectively, it's just that thing. Um, what next? Well, we can dig in there. Again, we've got this type function application. It might not be obvious because we're using infix notation, but effectively this is the function type of function application where we've got the two arguments, beta and uh, the function type gamma to beta. So we've got the union of those two. Um, I think we might need a bit more space, so let's start a new page. We've got the free variables in gamma to beta, uh, which is just the free variables in beta and free variables in gamma, again, because that's a type function application. And then the free variables in beta, we also need to figure out it was just beta because that's a type variable. Similarly for gamma, we can do the same thing. Um, so let's start bubbling that up. Um, so we've got all these expressions. Um, these are just you know, copied from the previous slides. The free variables uh, in the top statement, that's what we're going to find. And now we can just substitute. So let's take the free variables in gamma, put those together, free variables in beta, put those together. Um, we can substitute the free variables in gamma to beta, put that together. We can substitute the free variables in beta to gamma to beta. Um, we can substitute the free variables in the list of beta to gamma to beta. Um, and then we can just do some simple uh, set arithmetic where we find out that what we've got is gamma as the free variables in this, which makes sense, right? Because when you look at it, well, there are only two type variables really in it. 
as the beta and the gamma, and actually the beta is bound by that for all quantifiers, so we'd expect it just to be the gamma. So you could, could do this by inspection pretty quickly, um, but it's useful to do it through the formal rules because then you'll know that you're definitely getting it right, and also it's to understand what a compiler would do, what a type checker might do to figure out what's going on here. So let's try another example. Um, what are the three variables in this context? So we have a context capital gamma, which again is a list of assignments where the first assignment is x has type int and y has type for all beta, beta to gamma. So all the three variables, uh, well, we can remember the rules. We said that a free variable in an empty context is just an empty set. Otherwise, it is the free variables in the rest of the context and the last assignment. So let's have a look. The free variables in this context, remember we said gamma was equal to this. Well, let's have a look at what rule applies. Is the context empty? No, it's not. So it's got to be the other rule. Well, we take the rest of the context, so the left-hand side is x is of type int, we take the type of the right-hand side one, which is the for all beta, beta to gamma, and it's the union of those two. So what do we do here? Well, then let's take the left-hand side of that and let's dig into that. Well, here the free variables of x is type int. Again, it's not empty, so we use the second rule, where effectively we're looking at it as if the rest of the context is empty in a sense, and we've got the type uh, which is substitute for sigma is int, so you have the free variables in int and free variables in empty. And again, the free variables in empty just by the first rule is the empty set. So we can uh, simplify that straight away, easy. And we can do another simplification step here where let's substitute that back in. Now we just need to figure out uh, these two expressions where we've got the free variables in int and free variables in for all beta, beta to gamma. For these expressions, we have to figure out what are the free variables in these types. We had some practice of that just a second ago, but let's have a look again. So um, these are our two expressions. We want to figure out the free variables in them. Um, let's bring up the rules again. So remember, these are the rules for our free variables in types. Um, taking the first one, well, free variables in for all beta, beta to gamma, that looks a lot like a quantifier. So again, we're going to use that rule where we say, okay, we take out whatever is quantified, that's the beta, and then we take the free variables in the type after the quantifier, which is the beta to gamma. Free variables in beta to gamma, well that is a type function application, so we're going to split that up into its union, which is the beta and the gamma in there, and those beta and gamma are just uh, type variables, and so they can split out like that. Free variables in integer, this is a weird one, you might think, hey, is this a variable? Actually, remember what we discussed, a integer we're going to think of as a type function application with zero arguments. Because there are zero arguments, this is effectively the union of nothing, um, so it's just an empty set. So let's do a bit of uh, easy substitutions uh, in there, another easy substitution there, um, another substitution there, and now we can do some basic set math. Uh, we've got beta and gamma minus beta is just gamma. Um, let's take those back these two expressions back to what we had, um, so we can finish off figuring out what the free variables in this context are. Well, it's just the union of all of those, so let's substitute those back in. Um, pretty simple, some basic set union, and there we go. The free variables in that expression are just gamma. Which again, when we look at it, yeah, that looks about right. The x is type int, well, that doesn't actually have any type variables in it, so there's not going to be no free variables in there. The variables for y are just beta and gamma, and the beta is bound by the for all quantifier, so we'd expect it just to be gamma. That was a very quick run through on free variables. Hopefully it made sense. If it is still confusing, have a pause, have a think of some other examples, try it yourself. Maybe go back to the video we did on free variables in Lambda expressions, because actually almost all of this is the same. It's just the syntax and the symbols look a bit different. I mean, semantically it is different as well, but the kind of process of it is very, very similar. So again, have a look at that, have a think about what it really means to be a free variable. Again, it's a variable that isn't bound, and here it's a variable that isn't bound by a quantifier. Very similar to how in Lambda expressions we had uh, things that aren't bound by function abstraction. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.